I always get asked why the U and the P are capitalized up and dice up the classroom. The up stands for unconditional passion. After all, dice up the classroom is about finding your unconditional passion in education and bring it out in your students. Why most people know that an abbreviation usually but not always consists of a letter or a group of letters that taken from a word or phrase to shorten it. Up is actually an acronym. Acronyms are regarded as a subgroup of abbreviations formed from the initial components in a phrase or a word. Usually these components are individual letters or parts of a word or names like up or in a hashtag or in a message or an email. Words are very powerful and even a single word can have several meanings in it and words can motivate students and teachers to create learning in many ways. And in this episode of Dice Up the Classroom, I'm going to show you just some of the ways you can turn a word into something truly magical in the classroom. So get ready to find out what's the word. Hi everybody, I'm Ryan Reed and welcome to Dice Up the Classroom. Summer is here and while we are taking deep breaths from another amazing school year, we know that the, that little extra sleep, family vacation, or just a little bit of summer fun will be on our minds. But before we all know, we will be sitting down and looking up or or practicing new ideas for the school year again, and that's where we're going to start. The original idea for this episode came from a, from my cousin who shared a magazine article from Old Baby Magazine about a family who loves to do fun stuff during summer, but knows those lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer will leave a person sometimes bored. This family made up a simple whiteboard using BOARD as an acronym, and their family had to find a new way to use the BOARD board Yes, I said it, the board board, as a way to avoid some boredom. The first message was spelled out H, have you, B, been creative, O, outside and play, R, read a book, E, exercise for 20 minutes, D, done something useful. By the way, I did. But I thought, what an amazing concept, incorporating a word during something we deal with every day and turn to something amazing that benefits a person in more ways than one. There was just one little problem. I did a simple Google and Pinterest search and found out over 50 different ways others have done this. In fact, it predates the original article by almost a year. That's the thing. We see something like this and find out it's not really a new concept, but someone has put a new spin on it or looked at it from a different angle. The original reason why I created AppDites is because I wanted students and teachers to look at something from different angles and unlock learning. And that's what we're going to do here today. We're going to start this all off. It's really simple. Go outside. No, really. Go outside. Well, at least after you finish watching this vidcast. But when you do, just look around. What do you see? What do you feel? What words come to you? And then write them down. Then on either your mobile or desktop device, head over to nameacronym.net. This is an amazing free service that works on any device. You enter a name, and then you pick a subject. You can do a regular default search, or all the way to the names of prehistoric creatures to see what your word becomes. I chose colors for mine. What's great about this is it isn't going to give you the, just the basic colors. It's going to give you everything from color to shades and definitions. From there, I decided to create something fun by creating a thing link on complementary colors and then link videos and a stick around puzzle to each one of these parts in thing link to teach my students about complementary colors and what is the difference between them and primary colors and even what goes to selecting colors for your art. That's what is great about this online, too. It really makes you look at a word at a different angle. My lesson was iPad related, but it doesn't have to be on one device. Think about doing a search on prehistoric creatures. 
Students will get creatures they probably have never heard before. They can do a research project on what those creatures are. You can dice things up by putting your student's name in a random name selector tool or app and then assign the creature to your students to do your report and see how it fits. If you have a problem trying to think of a way to do this report, I discover a great tool at the Mobile Learning Experience 2015 from Tim Rylands and Sarah Nita called Thinking Dice. These are an awesome tool. What you do is roll them and they bring up different ways to look at something. Maybe it might ask, what are some of the problems? Or what facts or ideas show? They are an excellent tool that will allow your students to look at something at a different angle. As an example, I put in dice in nameabricum.net and got dialogue, which is a small version of a T-Rope, but they only got as long as five feet and around three or four inches tall, basically the size of a large dog. What I did then was use Google Draw, create a sketch note info pit on the dialogue from eating habits to where it fit in the T-Rex family, upload the think link, and then tag the links on each part of it and then use Blabberize to make Dill, as I've named him, talk a little about himself. Hi everybody, my name is Dill. I was better known as a dialogue source. I lived 130 million years ago during the Cretaceous period. I was actually a member of the T-Rex family, so I was a meat eater. However, I only got no bigger than three to four feet tall, and actually I was one of the type of dinosaurs known as the Subsocidia, which actually had feathers more than skin like a lizard and everything else. I wasn't able to fly or glide or anything, but I was also known to travel in herds and everything and was very much associated with the rest of the Tyrannosaurus Rex family. And that's all you need to know about Dill. Speaking of info pics, how many times have you seen this on a student's mobile device? You have to ask your students, how many selfies did you need? Or how is this picture of it? that one spot on the floor that is so interesting you took 200 pictures of it? Well, before you start telling them to start cleaning off their camera roll or Google Drive, take a page from Tony Vincent. Challenge your students to make an info pic from these pictures. Overlay them with words, saying, or other images that will turn your casual photo into a powerful image. There are tons of digital tools that can transfer photos with a touch on the screen or a tap of the keyboard. Take this picture of the Phoenix Children's Hospital during my trip to Arizona. It may seem to be just a regular photo, but when you add some words to it, it becomes a powerful thank you message. If you want to go a step further, and if you're an iPad user, try Adobe Sling. This free tool can take pictures and insert them in amazing ways to create a new type of presentation that might start on an iPad but can be viewed across almost anything from mobile to desktop. You can do it from your iPad, insert hyperlinks, even overlay more photos with text or overlay existing photos into it. If the students don't have a school email available, don't worry. You can create a classroom email. This allows you to not only allow students to keep their work all in one place, but you can actually check the date of each project to make sure the students are doing their work. If you're a Chromebook, Android, or tablet device user, I highly recommend trying Taggle. Taggle is a word cloud creation resource. But like other word cloud creations programs like Wordle or Tagzito, you can import your own images into Taggle and create amazing word clouds from the shapes. What is your word of the day? Have students upload a photo of their word and then have them type in the words associated with it. These can range anywhere from cinnamons, honophones, definitions, or even sentences using the word. Do some tailoring and then hit the generation button and watch your words like take shape in amazing ways that you can share from social networks to your own Google Drive. Speaking of word clouds, many of you have seen me on Twitter use the iOS app TweetRoop. This awesome app allows you to create word clouds using words associated with a user, hashtag, or both from Twitter. All you have to do is type in the user or hashtag, generate it, 
let it go, and then you can reset the word clouds to be random, horizontal, vertical, change the colors, text, and more. You can only make word clouds from 25 to 100 words, and of course, if there aren't enough words to reach a minimum, don't worry. Tweet root will make, still make up the word clouds, even if you just have one word. But sometimes one word can be worth a thousand pictures. You also can do a tweet root of the day. Have students create their word clouds using tweet root, and then pull them into apps like Book Creator, Google Drive, Keynote, PowerPoint, and create digital word cloud books from them. A fun one that I'm having my students do this fall is making a tweet root of the week and basing them after month themes like October, set the fall colors to fall theme, and then use apps like Google Draw, Pick Collage, or even Explain Everything to do digital books telling a story about their word clouds for each month what the words are about and why they were chosen and then dice it up a little bit and have them create blackout poetry using sketch to create blackout poems based on their word clouds that are created. It's also great if you're a one device school. Tweetroot is 99 cents and as of this recording only available on iOS but you can still do the same with Wordle, Tagzito, and Taggle on almost all devices and they're free. While we're talking about drawing, many of my students always tell me they wish they could create their own video games, but they usually only get to use a makey makey to make game controllers. Well, now my students can draw their own video games and bring them live using Pixel Press floors. Adam Bello, the creator of Edgy Clipper, recently talked about this great iOS app. If you are an iPad school, Pixel Press allows students to scan in their own drawings and turn them into video games similar to Super Mario Brothers. And that only allows students to play with them on their iOS devices, but also share on the Pixel Press network. Turn this into a lesson, have students create drawings of words. Make sure they connect each letter and add some traps, floors, and more, just like a real video game. Once they are finished, have them sign into Pixel Press on an iPad, clip, and share their games. As of this recording, iOS's devices like an iPhone or iPad can only play Pixel Press games and not scan them in. If you're only a one device classroom, don't worry. You can set up a classroom account with no problem and share. Sure that have your students play each of their classmates and watch them have some gamification fun and fly through learning. And speaking of fly, they say the bird is the word. Do a daily bell ringer using Chirp and I, on iOS to send out a sound signal that will send out a word, link, or image to the students' devices. After that, they just click on the globe or the word that appears on their screen and they can either take it to the link or read it on their devices. Try a daily bell ringer using Chirp for students to write up haiku poems, mini lessons, or just regular answers to the question. If you're a Chrome user, Tone does exactly the same thing, and even better, you can link them back to your Google Drive or your Google Classroom. They are both free and incredibly fun to use, so give them a try today. I've thrown the word curation around a lot, about keeping your app smashes and creations clean and organized for students to pool their resources into one place in a type of more portfolio system rather than something like Pinterest, Live Banders, or Edge. Well, don't worry. There is Edgy Clipper for that. Edgy Clipper was started by Adam Bello to allow teachers and students to explore thousands of pieces of educational content, find lesson plans, resources, and videos, and search for the most popular content by subject or interest. Now, you're probably like, Ryan, that's great. But what does this have to do with this vidcast? Everything. I always want my students to create because that's where the magic of learning happens. When I see my students create a lesson or project, it's just amazing. An edgy clipper can help students create lessons for others, especially if they use one word, create. However, lots of times students' projects or lessons get lost. They either get buried in folders or deleted off their devices and they're never seen or heard from again. And I know students sometimes wish they could have their past works kept in a place where they could access them if they wanted to. And that's where Edgy Clipper comes in. 
Have students keep a portfolio of their word creation at Edgy Clipper, especially if they aren't a one-to-one -one school. Edgy Clipper works across all platforms. Have them create their boards and then clip their creation just like on Pinterest. They can import their clips from their devices, Google Drives, Dropboxes, etc. Then after that, turn the lessons back around and have them clip resources to make new lessons based on the resources they find. Have them create their own word lessons and projects and share them with the class. In fact, they don't even need to create a lesson. They can clip resources for word lessons and share them right back with a teacher along with ways that would use them and create lessons or a project. I've seen so many teachers just smile when their students give them ideas and resources to make their lessons and project. It's a great way to create a student-led classroom with a teacher. Finally, I'm going to flip the use of app and web resources with a word work here with some of my appification. What's appification, you might ask? It's when you combine gamification with using apps for learning. In this case, I'm going to use word tiles. Oh yeah, you heard me right, word tiles. Similar to playing Scrabble, but with a twist, which I call tile smashes. Have students play Scrabble and assemble Word. You can create your own Word using digital resources to create your Word tiles. My favorites to use are Google Draw. You can easily make Word tiles using the Word Art tool and then either download them or share them on your Google Drive through Google Classroom, Schoology, or even Edmodo to your students. They can crop, clip, download to assemble a work with tiles. However, once they assemble a word, they have to look at the letters. What apps start with those letters? Once they think of the apps or resources that those letters make up, students have to create a lesson project based around the word. In my example, we use the word shade. In this case, the student could create a lesson about shade using distant suns about how light is cast from stars in space. Then the student can use acronym to find words associated with suns. Next, the student can clip resources in the use of Edgy Clipper and use Haiku Deck to create a presentation and then give it life using Shadow Puppet EDU. Just because they spelled shade doesn't mean they have to use the apps in that order. I want students to enter a gameful experience to support value creation on a deeper level with students and their teachers. And the beauty of it, it doesn't matter what you use because in the end, they will not only learn, they will also succeed. These are only a handful of ways you can start to dice up your classroom when it comes to words, but once you get started, you'll soar. That's going to do it for this episode of Dice Up the Classrooms. I want to thank everyone who has supported me in my work, especially Tony Vincent, Tim Ryland, Sarah Nita, Felix Giacomo, Wesley Fryer, John Samuelson, Rodney Turner, Sarah Crawford, Deirdre Shelter, Panina Ryback, Michael Boyst, Jenny Ashbury, Bart Buxnix, Adam Bello, and Jonathan Nader, who taught me many of the resources I used in my lesson. And I especially want to thank my cousin Angie for sharing this original board board with me that inspired me to create this lesson. For more information, please check out my post right here at Dice Up the Classroom. And of course, look for me on Twitter at ryan 7 I'll see you everyone later, and keep on creating, because that is always the key.